Welcome to chapter four. Um, learning objective one introduces you to the difference between what you have been learning, which is the traditional costing systems, job order costing, which was chapter two, and process costing, which was um, chapter three, the one that we just uh, completed. Uh, these basically are traditional because they allocate overhead using the predetermined overhead rate, okay? Um, and so they consider this, you know, traditional uh, had been happening. So for example, if you look at this company, Atlas, which we're gonna look at both from a traditional perspective and from the new perspective for what we call activity-based costing, uh, you'll see the differences come across in terms of why uh, a lot of companies have moved on from the traditional costing systems to uh, more specific systems, as you'll see. So Atlas Company basically makes uh, abdominal fitness products. I am not a spokesman for the person. I probably wouldn't recognize an abdominal fitness product if you showed it to me. Um, not for a while, because uh, I don't have... My abdomen is stretched well out of proportion by this point. Anyway, enough about that. But the two products that they make are the Ab Bench and the Ab Coaster. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. All right, so there's two products that we're talking about for Alice, the Ab Bench and the Ab Coaster. Um, so the direct material cost uh, for every unit is $40 for the ab bench, $30 for the ab coaster. The direct labor cost is $12 per unit for both products. Okay. Um, both products require one direct labor hour of every unit that they produced. And so both products allocate overhead at 30 bucks per unit. So look at illustration 4.3, which takes all this information and organizes it in an Excel sheet for you. It's at the bottom of page 136. And what they do here is they organize the manufacturing costs for the ab bench and the ab coaster in, uh, in column C here, ab bench and column B. Direct materials, as was mentioned up here, 40 bucks for the ab bench, 30 bucks for every ab coaster. Direct labor is $12 an hour and it takes an hour to produce each product, one product. And overhead is related as 30 bucks per unit. So as you see, it costs them based on this method, the direct manufacturing costs per unit, $82 to produce an ab bench and $72 to produce an ab coaster. Now that's traditionally how they would allocate cost. And what you're gonna be seeing is a different way to allocate cost and, uh, and why a lot of companies have moved on to these new approaches. So the new approach basically is what's called activity-based costing, uh, ABC, activity-based costing. And that's because they've looked a little bit deeper into really how much um, work and resources it takes to literally build a product. Um, and their goal was to try to uh, understand the real costs involved. And that's because manufacturing has changed a lot over, the, over time and so has a lot of service industries. Um, the amount of direct labor uh, has gone down, right? And uh, we have really relied heavily on machinery. So there's been a significant increase in overhead costs. Okay, so it might not necessarily be appropriate to allocate things on a traditional scale. We might need to look at things uh, from the fact that our process has been become more complex. Okay, 
So this is what uh, ABC is going to be teaching you about. Uh, because creating a product or providing a, a service um, in, in a lot of areas have multiple activities involved in them, uh, activity-based costing tries to identify those activities and the cost of those activities and then allocates it based on that. There's the activity-based costing. Right. When you, if you identify the activities that are used to create a product or to provide a service, uh, you can break down those activities into major parts and you're able to actually come up with a more accurate costing method for it. Okay. So there are, um, so again, they assign the cost based on the activity and activities have something called cost drivers, what you're going to be seeing. Okay, um, and that's gonna be explained more appropriately on the next uh, couple of slides. The key concepts that are in your book here in terms of activity, right? Any event, action, or transaction, or sequence of work that incurs costs when we produce a product uh, or perform a service, we have to identify the activity cost pool. So whether that's ordering materials, setting up machines, boxing them, what have you. Those are all activity pools. And then based on those, uh, what's really driving the cost? What's really taking the most uh, of that activity? And this is what you're gonna be learning about very shortly, how to identify a cost driver. All right, so activity-based costing, uh, and this is a very, very nice um, little illustrations on page 138, if you have your book uh, next to you like I do. Um, so first we identify all the activities that are involved to create a product. Um, the next thing we do is we identify the cost drivers uh, that are involved in the activities that are really behind the, uh, the, um, the cost. Right. Most of the cost is usually sucked up in a particular part of an activity that's a cost driver. Then we're going to compute something called an activity based overhead rate for every cost pool. And that way we can allocate overhaul overhead costs to the product using real overhead rates determined by the cost pool. In other words, the activity is uh, what we spend on the activities to make something should be a bigger part of the cost of each product. And these are the steps that they take to identify that and you'll see that. Okay. So um, activity-based costing allocates overhead in something called the two-stage process. Okay. The first thing uh, step one does is they look at costs based on these activity cost pools. And the second thing that they do is they allocate the overhead to those costs using the cost drivers, which we're gonna be looking at in more detail very soon. Okay. Again, the more complex it is for a manufacturer to put together these products or services, uh, the more activities there are going to be in producing a product or a service. And that means uh, we have to identify the cost drivers in each of those activities. And so this is um, a little bit of detailed work. So let's take a look at the overhead costs uh, that are going to be involved in creating the products that we just looked at, which is the ab bench and the ab coaster. Okay. Um, well, the first is uh, we got to buy a whole bunch of supplies, right? We got to buy uh, raw materials, other types of things. So uh, purchasing all of that is an activity cost pool. Um, uh, well, what do what does the purchasing department do? Well, they they generate a bunch of purchases. So the number of purchase orders from that from that purchasing department is going to be the cost driver because we need to allocate resources to the production of both the ab bench and the ab coaster. 
And so we have to have those resources purchased up front. Um, the amount of storage uh, for resources and product and uh, really comes down to companies having to uh, have enough square footage in their, in their facilities and square footage costs money. So if you're putting together a product that doesn't require a lot of space, uh, a lot of square footage versus a product that's going to take up three football fields of manufacturing space, you're going to have different costs in each. And so uh, this cost driver then looks at how much square footage we need to produce each of the products and then we allocate it based on uh, those particular products. And so that's another one here. These are all examples. You'll get to know them. Uh, actually, they're going to they're going to tell you a lot about what they are when you actually get the homework assignment. So it, it'll be a little bit easier to identify. Uh, certainly, you're going to you might be needing machinery if you're putting together these. If you're creating an ab bench, creating a coaster, there's going to be lots of uh, tools and machinery used to put all that type of stuff together. So in other words, you're gonna be, uh, the major cost driver to using the machinery is actually how many hours those machines are gonna be operating uh, because that's what's really costing the company money, right? Um, and then maybe it takes more time to put together an ab coaster. It looks like a more complex machine uh, than the ab bench, which sort of looks a little bit less complex. So what if you need to drill more holes or, solder more joints or all this other stuff. Well, if it takes a little bit more to do that for the ab coaster, you're going to assign more of that cost to the ab coaster than it would you would assign to a cost of an ab bench, particularly if it's a relatively simple um, structure that the machines are putting together versus uh, more complex uh, units, many more things that machinery has to be used in uh, used on to to create. Um, so that gives them a more accurate understanding of the machine hours being used to produce a product. Um, and then of course, all of this, uh, you're going to have uh, supervisory uh, costs um, for that. Um, a lot of times supervisors are given a certain department or function to oversee. So they're really uh, in, in charge and overseeing a certain number of employees. And so um, if, they're, if it's simply because it's a more complex machine, it takes more employees to, uh, to, to supervise uh, for the ab coaster, well, those costs should be allocated to the ab coaster. Uh, if it doesn't take as many employees to put together the ab bench and thus less supervision is required, well, then you should allocate less of that cost to supervising the app bench. This is basically an overview of what activity-based costing is sort of about. They identify the activities. Again, the illustration is in your book here. They identify the activities. Then they say, okay, of this activity, what's the biggest part uh, that's going to cost us? Uh, and so they, they sort of go from there. Okay. All right. So uh, we have come to the end of uh, the do it exercise, uh, the do it, I'm uh, oh, sorry, the uh, learning objective one with the do it exercise here. Uh, this is of course done for you, amen, hallelujah, but this is part of your, your first homework assignment for chapter four here. So indicate whether the statements are true or whether they are false based on the information we reviewed and read in learning objective one, okay? So it says here, a traditional cost system allocates overhead by means of multiple rates, multiple rates. Well, uh, you should know that they actually just usually do it on the overhead, you know, the predetermined overhead rate, one particular rate. Um, that's what's interesting about activity-based costing. They use multiple overhead rates. They use, uh, uh, they look at things based on activity and there's a lot of activities in putting together things. So it's false for traditional, but it is true for activity-based costing. 
Number two, activity-based costing allocates overhead costs in a two-stage process. Well, this was something we just went over earlier in a slide, right? That's absolutely true, okay? Uh, number three here, direct material and direct labor are easier to trace to products than overhead is. Um, that's a very, very good statement. Uh, it happens to be true. It's easier to trace the amount of materials you use to create something and the amount of labor hours. What's difficult is the overhead. You know, that's why we have all these systems that we're learning is because overhead's a huge part of being in business and uh, we need to make sure we're allocating the cost properly. Okay. Uh, the fourth one here, um, as manufacturing processes have become more automated, which means use of more machinery, right? More companies have chosen to allocate overhead based on labor. Well, actually, they need less labor. Uh, so this is false. Um, manufacturing has relied a lot more on robotics and machinery and much less on labor. So allocating overhead based on labor just doesn't make sense anymore. It doesn't make sense anymore. Um, it's, uh, it's much better to allocate it on other things. So in ABC, activity-based costing, an activity is an event, action, transaction, or work sequence that incurs cost when producing a product. And this is early from our slideshow. And of course, this is, this is true. This is a, a truthful statement here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get us back to our uh, group here.